Now, I want to show you something a little bit, a little bit more complicated, a little bit out of the box. It's strongly alternative way of doing something that might seem strange in the beginning but also at the same time very 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 cool I will show you how you can create a Windows software for Linux how to create a Windows program that is meant to run on Linux a Windows program that serves no purpose when you run it on Windows at all I will create a Windows program that will list kernels Linux kernels installed on your Linux and will allow you to delete the ones that are not being currently used for you to recover some disk space on your boot partition and again that will be a Windows program the reason for it is to show you that if you are already a Windows programmer and you already write software for Windows then if for whatever reason you don't want or cannot afford resource wise money wise knowledge wise to also create your software from the scratch natively for Linux then what you can do is you can use your Windows tool your Windows SDK and create a Windows program that will be wine aware that will know whether or not it is being actually run on Linux with wine installed and which will allow you to do things with your Linux operating system So uh, all of that demo, that second demo that I will now show you, you could do that purely on Windows. You could. I just don't have a Windows here immediately. I would have to go and grab another computer, uh, which I'm lazy to do right now. But I will do it on window, uh, on Linux instead. The reason why you can do all of that on uh, Windows, except for testing at the end, right? Because to actually test it, you would have to have a Linux to to deploy it there and, and see if it works as expected. But except for the final testing, just the entire writing and compiling, you could do everything on Windows. The reason is because I will be using Windows tool, tools to do it. I'm going to install Borland Delphi 7 on my Ubuntu Linux. So this Now in my Delphi 7, I will open a project that I previously already copied, like I've written it before and I just copied to to this computer and I open this project so this is the project here the project window looks like that if I run this program now because this is Windows program this is not Linux program remember what I'm doing right now let's imagine I'm now on Windows doing it so imagine I'm now in Windows not in Linux and this Delphi 7 is running in my Windows okay so this is my Windows program here and I run it if it detects that is it is running on Windows real actual Windows then it will show a <laughs> message that it serves no purpose on Windows that it is designed to run on Linux and after you click OK it will close but if it finds out that it is actually running under Linux uh, via Wine layer then instead what it will do you will list all the kernels that you currently have installed the one that is being currently in use will be in bold font and the remaining ones will be regular font and then you can select any of these regular ones and if you do, you have an option to uninstall it. The uninstallation of an old kernel happens in the way that after you click on a button, uninstall, 
it will open GNOME terminal window asking you for your root password. Uh, I do that for two reasons, to keep it simpler, but also to keep all of the sudo passwords, all of the root passwords away from my main application. I don't, I, I don't want to have these um, trust issue with my users. So I don't even force my users to wonder whether or not they can trust my software to put their root password inside. I do it separately. I just open a GNOME terminal with some commands fed into it already. It will ask user for the root password and if the password is correct, it will continue with um, removing the old kernel. Because now I want to show you that it actually works so I'm going to run it. First I'm going to compile it. Compile it without running. And I open the folder of this program. This is the folder with the program and you can see UKM EXE. So this is a Windows program. I can close my IDE now. I only needed it to compile the program and I open my program directly. So it opened on my primary uh, monitor but I drag it here and there you go. This is in fact a Windows program. This is in fact a Windows binary EXE program that I'm running on Linux but it lists my Linux kernels here, you see. The current one is 3.13 and the oldest one is is also 13 but with some minor versions difference. Let's pick this one here and click on, on install. A terminal is brought and asks me for my root password. And after I provided the password it is now uninstalling my old kernel. And very very soon this one will go off the list. Okay, so as you can see, that kernel already is gone from the list. The terminal finished and closed. It still uh, stays open for three seconds after it finished doing everything, just with the prompt so that the user like, can look around and see what is happening. That also gives me opportunity to to make it visible to the user what is happening in the background, right? First of all, I do not ask user to type any root password inside of my application. I, I just don't want to do that. And second of all, um, user can actually at least those who um, who understand the commands behind what is happening, those users can still see what is happening there and like, you know, know that nothing strange is happening behind, right? So try to understand how cool is this thing that I now, uh, that I now demoed to you because it's a little bit, it's sometimes a little bit uneasy to, to fully wrap your head around it because what what is here happening is that I just created a Windows program that is meant to run on Linux and that helps you solve some user problem, right, on Linux. So, and of course, I did all of that on Linux because I used my um, Delphi 7 installed inside of Ubuntu Linux and I did that there. But essentially, what this demo proves is that I could, like, I'm, I'm totally able, I'm capable of go into my windows, opening my SDK, for example, in my case, let's say Delphi, write a program, compile, take the exe file, the exe file, and give it to users on Linux. They will take that file, will run it, and they will see a program that is being designed for Linux users to do something with Linux operating systems. In my case, I created a program that lists kernels, and allows you to uninstall the kernels that are all that are not being used so that you can save the space on your boot partition. Sometimes when you want to install a new update, 
there's a message that you cannot uh, upgrade certain things because there's a space running out on your, on your boot partition, right? So then you can just bring, out, bring up this program, see the list, choose some of these uh, old kernels and uninstall them, right? So this is useful, definitely useful. But the thing is that I made this on Windows. Now, you might ask, like, why to even bother? You can do that directly on Linux, right? You, it, it could be a native um, um, Linux application. Of course, sure, but that's not the point. That's not the point of this demo. Uh, that wouldn't be so cool, right? Of course, this is strongly alternative way of doing things, right? But essentially, it proves that if you are a Windows mm, developer, you could go ahead and start creating software for Linux users, for Linux operating system, with very low learning curve you would only need to learn some of the things about Linux and Linux commands maybe in shell, but you would not need to learn maybe another programming language. You would not need to learn maybe another programming SDK. You would maybe not need to learn how to use another source code editor, another debugger, another IDE that learning curve is totally gone, right? Additionally, you would not need another resource. You would not need another virtual machine or another computer running Linux. You would not need any of these. All until the very final stage in which you actually want to deploy your thing and, and test it, right? Sure. but. It is not required, it is not absolutely not necessary for the entire process of creation, right? And this is pretty mind blowing to me. So with this video, I want to make a claim, which is strongly subjective. It's just, just something that is my personal opinion, right? And you can, you can agree or not, you can leave comments and you can try to argue. But my claim is that this kind of stuff makes Linux with Wine installed on it, the best platform for cross-platform development, software development. So if you want to write software for many platforms, not only one of them, then Linux could be, in my opinion, the most convenient pl uh, base platform, the primary operating system from which you mostly and primarily work and create your software. Why? Because, first of all, obviously, you can create software, native software for Linux. Second of all, you can, as I showed in my demos, also on that Linux, create native software for Windows. And third, you can create software that is native Windows binary, but is actually meant to run on other operating systems, just like in this last demo. This program is completely designed to only and purely so serve purpose on Linux, but it is not Linux native code. It is a native Windows binary, right? I and I did it on Linux, by the way. So that means that I can create it the way, the same way for, for example, Mac OS or BSD or some other POSIX system that can also. Um, have wine installed. So this is the cool aspect of, uh, of it, and and this is th this is really um, when I s really stopped using Windows anymore. Is when I realized that I can do all of my software development for both Linux and for Windows and in some crazy variants also for maybe macOS or something like that, all purely from my Linux. And sure, of course, sometimes I would want to reboot my uh, computer because I have also dual boot, I have also Windows and go there and test something. Of course, I sometimes would want to uh, launch up a virtual machine with Windows and test something in there, of course, but this really is something that happens rarely and barely happens because I'm able to write, create, compile, and run and test all of that 
exclusively on Ubuntu Linux. And this is why I feel this platform is especially strong and beneficial for those who write a software for many platforms, not just for one OS. Thank you.